Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan Passion, also known as Infensia. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I export Rigify characters from Blender into Unity. It's a few steps that you have to keep in mind. I use a, a third party script add-on for that one. So I'll talk you through how to download and install that one. And then how I prep the rig, how I export it and import it into Unity. And whether you should use generic or humanoid rig, I'll explain a few of the differences. I'll finish off the video as well by doing some simple root motion to get the characters to propel forward with your animation and how I do that. I'm also testing out a new noise reduction plugin that I got from my friend. Let's call, uh, let's see what it's called here. It's called Brus Free by Clear Grand. It's a Swedish company that's made it. It says that it's gonna remove any unwanted noise. So let's enable it here and see if it works. So let's click enable. Okay, don't know if that works, but let's keep it enabled anyway. Oh, I got that plugin from my good friend Lenny B by the way. Thanks a lot for uh, sharing that one. He had a free giveaway, so thanks for uh, using that one. Hopefully it'll help me a lot in this video and save a lot of earache for my uh, viewers, including you. So let's get started, let's have some fun, and let's do Rigify to Unity. Okay, first of all, we need to download the Rigify to Unity add-on. So go to this GitHub address and then just click on clone or download and then download the zip file. And once that's finished downloading, you can just uh, go to File, well, in Blender, go to File, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and then you browse your way to uh, your download location. Select the zip file. And you'll see now that it's not actually appearing in the list. Uh, and I had to do this, I'm not sure if you had to as well, but start to the Windows Explorer and go to Percent App Data Percent, and then follow this path that I described. And then we need to rename this Python file. Just uh, click F2 in Windows and rename it to underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. And now it'll appear in the settings here so you can enable it and then close it. Okay, and now we're gonna fix the rig here. So uh, left click on the rig to select it and then go to the object data properties tab and click on the prepare rig for unity button. That should be, uh, you might have to expand the rigify to unity converter tab there first. You should have a little message now saying unity ready rig at the bottom of your screen as well. And then you select the characters that you want to rig. Usually it might only be one, but I rig multiple at the same time here. So I select all of them and then I finish by selecting the rig last. And then I do control P armature deform with automatic weights. And since I rigged multiple characters, I hide uh, all of them but one, and then I just press play to see that the animation that I had before is working and looking okay. I'll switch to another character, and then I also switch the action for that character and see that that walk also works. And then I switch to the, another character, and here I can see that the pirate has got a little bit of an issue here. So if you need to assign vertices that are not following the rig, make sure you now assign them to the uh, any prefix bones with a DEF prefix, which is uh, stands for deform. And those are the ones that will be used in Unity as well to deform your character. So it's very important that you do assign them to the DEF prefix bones. And after doing that, assigning those to the left hand, it works pretty good. And then you select all your characters and the rig. And in Blender here, you go to File, Export, FBX, and then you browse to where you want to save them. I usually save them into the assets folder of Unity itself because Unity will automatically import that then for you. And you can also overwrite them in the future and automatically Unity will re-import those uh, FBX files. So set the name, make sure you have selected objects selected here so you don't get a lot of extra stuff with. Apply scalings set to FBX unit scale. One meter in Unity will be one meter in Blender. And under armature, do only deform bones because you'll get a lot of extra unnecessary bones if you don't do that. And then just click the export button. Switch over to Unity and it'll automatically import it if you save it into the assets folder. And select your objects and go to the rig tab. And then you can see that there's a choice with the uh, type here, whether you should go generic or humanoid. And that's something you'll have to decide. And uh, generic supports something called bone squash and stretch if you've used that. So you can see that the left one here is stretching the bones. So that's the only one that supports that. For me, generic is about 20 to 25% faster, uh, but that's in my own tests. Uh, I've heard the opposite as well. So I'm not sure which one's true. Humanoid rigs, on the other hand, supports uh, animation retargeting. So if you have different sized characters, they can share the same animation. And Humanoid also supports inverse kinematics, like this aiming guy, for example. That's not supported with generic. So if you need bone squash and stretch, 
then go generic. And if you need retargeting or IK or mirroring animation clips, go with humanoid. I want to issue a big warning as well. If you do want to use uh, bone squash and stretch in the generic rig, it will also rescale any objects that you have uh, as a child to, for example, a hand. So if you have a weapon in a hand, it'll stretch and scale that object. Also, if you have a hat on the head or a backpack, that renders it pretty much unusable. Even though I'd love to use the stretching, I don't really uh, want to live with the side effects of having objects in my hands rescaling and having to deal with that. So I'll probably stick myself to using humanoid more, even though I'd like to do the stretching. Okay, so let's start with uh, setting up a humanoid. In the project folder, click on the mesh and uh, make sure on the rig that you switch the animation type there to humanoid. And then it'll be grayed out, so you have to apply this first and then switch uh, a tab and back and forth so you can come back into the screen, otherwise you won't see the configure screen. So once you come back, you can click on configure and you have to save your scene if you haven't already because this will open up a new temporary scene that Unity uses. And here you can see if it mapped it correctly, and usually it will do that if you follow the rigify structure. So uh, here you can do some testing in the muscles and see it's a little bit dark here for some reason in Unity. But now you can use these little sliders here to see that the rig behaves pretty much as you were hoping. So you can do some different uh, actions here, and it's only for testing as far as I know. Just make sure that it, that it looks all right. Usually it's done a really good job, and I've never really had to do any tweakings or anything like that. So. I revert uh, the settings here and then I just uh, switch out of there, click on the done button and go back here. Okay, it's not so much fun working with the, the gray object, so I collapse the project folder here and create a new folder called textures. And I use my UV mapping technique, so I'll drag my uh, simple uh, low pixel texture in, into the texture folder. And then I expand the mesh folder again and then it's time to drag this object into the scene. And it'll look really dark as you can see and usually the lighting is a bit off so you can go to the lighting tab and do auto generate for the lighting and that should light it up a little bit for you. Now we can go back to working with the material here. So uh, create a new folder again and uh, call this one materials, keep it tidy. And then right click in that one again and do create material and then you can just I name it common. And I drag the texture into the albedo map, slide the smoothness down, and then I have to change this to no compression and do point filter, otherwise it'll get really blurry. And if you look back on the texture now, you can see that it's nice and crisp if you use a low pixel texture like I have. Back in the hierarchy now, we can expand the object and select uh, one or more of our characters. I select all of them and then I drag this common material into the material slot and that'll uh, put the same material onto all my characters. I split the scene here so I have a scene view and a game view at the same time. And then I create a new folder called it Animator Controller. And now we have to create an, a new Animator Controller. So uh, we right click on that new folder and do Create Animator Controller. It's a bit off my screen there because I use a high resolution. And then just call this one Rig Animator Controller. You can call it whatever you want. And then double click on it to go into Edit It. You're probably going to have to configure quite a lot of states for your animation. But for this one, I'm just going to drag one of the walk animations in. So I'll go to the project folder and select the mesh object that I've got. And then I'll just drag one of the walks. I'll do the new walk here. And I'll drag that into the Animator Controller. And uh, that'll create a state automatically, a default state. And now we have to select the root object in the hierarchy and then uh, assign this animator controller. So just uh, select that one and drag it into the controller slot of the animator. And then we press play to test it out. And I've got all the characters, so it looks a little bit strange, but it did a little walk cycle there, but it's not looping yet. And it'll look strange because I've got five characters visible at the same time on the screen here. Keep that in mind. So let's hide a few of them to get it less messy. And here's the noob doing the noob walk now. But again, it just stops because we haven't set it to loop or anything like that yet. It's a bit difficult to see when the character is floating in there how it's behaving. So I'll create a new box here and I just call it floor and put it to zero and then negative minus 0 0.5 on the Y axis. And then I'll just rescale a little bit. So a little pedestal for him to walk on. This should be giving us a little bit better insight to if the feet are anchored to the floor, good or not. When you model your characters, make sure that the origin of your mesh or the center of it is at the feet of the character. Okay, now let's loop this animation. So in the project folder, select the imported FBX file and go to the animations tab and then click on the noob walk in this case and then do loop time and then apply that one. And then we press play again and now we should automatically loop this walk cycle over and over again. 
And I don't know why, but uh, Unity has made it really tedious to uh, set the loop cycle for all of the animations. You have to do it individually. You have to click on an animation, click loop time, and then click apply. And then you have to go to the next animation and you have to redo it over again. And if you have a lot of looped animations, then it takes a lot of time to do this over and over again. If you need to re-import your object later on, you have to redo all this over and over again. So I've actually created a little script to help me having not to do this all the time because it'll save me a lot of time and hopefully it can save you a lot of time as well. So I'll create a, a download link in the description where you can create a script like this. I've prepared it and I won't have time to go through exactly how I programmed it. All I can say is that it's a hideous code. <laughs> so uh, I create a, a new folder and it has to be named editor here, otherwise it won't work. And then in there I can, if you download the script, you can just place it in this one. But I create a new one here called bulk anim clips setting. And then uh, I'll just copy and paste from another screen here. So, you, But again, you can download the script if you want it. But I just paste it here and it just it's a little helper window that you can use to uh, set this automatically for all your animations or add as many animations as you want. I'll scroll through it here in case the download link doesn't work in 10 years from now. <laughs> so you can pause it and edit it yourself, type it in, but hopefully the download sh link should work. Now there's a new window up there called Infensia and I'll dock this to the side here. And once it'll detect when you've selected an imported uh, uh, FBX files and it'll just throw up a simple checkbox for all of those uh, animations. So instead of having to do that over and over again, where you click on an animation and do loop time and apply, you can just uh, select all the checkboxes and loop all of them if that's what you want to do. If you want to loop all the cycles or you can just set the tick boxes, that'll do it all in one swoop. So hopefully that could save you some time in the future and you can customize that script if you want. Okay, now we can swap the animation. So uh, let's put the peggy leggy walk on this guy instead. And uh, that's the guy with the peg leg and it uh, works pretty good on this character because uh, they all share the same properties and rig and everything like that. Uh, we'll switch the character out as well, and that's what he looks like with uh, his own walk here. And this would have actually worked with a generic rig as well, because they're using the exact same rig. They don't have any size differences, so in this case it would have actually worked as well. But we're still using a humanoid at the moment. Let's switch over to the police officer now, and he's got a, a stretch uh, walk for him. He's using the peg leg walk now, but if we uh, switch to his walk here in the animator controller, let's uh, change to the police or the call in the cop walk cycle here. Now we'll have an, an issue because uh, that uses bone stretching in uh, Blender. So if we, uh, I'll just rename this to walk uh, because uh, we'll use it for any walk here. But you can see that he skips forward now. He doesn't actually stretch the legs as uh, the animation was. So he'll do a little skip forward. Maybe that's what you want, but probably it's not what you want. This is one of the limitations now with the humanoid rigs. It will not support stretchy legs. And Unity claims that it's due to performance reasons when you do the humanoid retargeting. So that's a real shame. It's, uh, it would have been lovely to have some stretching there. But if we look here in uh, Blender now, you can see that this cycle uses some uh, cartoony leg stretching. And it could have been, uh, for example, something with really long arms or if you get hit by something. So let's switch over to a generic rig. We're pretty much done with the, what we did for the humanoid rig there now. Go into the rig tab here and switch that one, the animation type to generic and hit apply. And that's really all you need to do. If you press play now, you can see that the bone stretching is working like we designed the walk cycle in Blender to begin with. And that's really all there is to the generic uh, switch. Simple as that, but uh, keep in mind those limitations that I mentioned before. Now we're actually going to switch to using root motion instead to propel the character forward. I had animated all these characters to walk in place and usually I propel them forward with the script, but uh, we have to change a little bit now to make this uh, character support root motion. So let's uh, apply this very scientific method here. I'll go into the second keyframe here and then I'll put my finger at the tip of the, of the foot and then I'll select all the bones and I'll just skip for all the frames and then I make sure that the tip of the toes is at the tip of my finger. So very scientific here. You could put an object in your Blender scene, but I'm too lazy for that. So I'll just keep my finger on the screen and go through the keyframes and then slide the character forward. So the tip of the toe is always at the same point. And you have to switch feet as well because one foot is gonna go up in the air and it's easier to keep track of feet that are planted on the ground. Once you've done that for all your keyframe, now you can see that the character is walking forward in the animation and it'll snap back to begin back at the beginning. And you have to use root motion for this to work. If you don't do that, 
and uh, then it'll, the character will behave the same in Unity. So we'll do the export process again now. Select everything like we did before and make sure we have this, all the previous settings. I'll re-import it into Unity here and as you can see all the loop time things have snapped back. So I got my little helper script here to check all of them and apply all the loops back again here. And uh, that's really all there is to that. And now we can do some testing here. And I made a duplicate of the animation walk cycle and called it the root motion as a suffix here. So let's switch the walk here to the new root motion animation that I created. And then in the scene, let's press play again now. And you can see that the character walks forward as we designed it and then it'll snap back, which we don't really want to happen. It's because we haven't set it to do any root motion yet. First, let's make the floor a bit longer so it doesn't walk off the, this little pedestal. So I'll just stretch it out a little bit and then we'll uh, do some uh, root motion testing here. In the hierarchy, select your root object there and tick the apply root motion under the animator. And then we need to go into the FBX file here as well. And then we have to set the root node. So go to the rig tab and select the root node here and switch it from none. And I actually forgot when I exported my object again, I've got a tremendous amount of extra bones here because I forgot to select deform bones only. And this is how many bones you get if you forget to select that. It's uh, <laughs> about 10 times more bones than you'd ever want and it impacts performance. It's a real mess. And uh, it's pretty good that I showed that one anyway. If you get that many bones, then you know what to do. Go back and re-export your object. And this time around, make sure that you expand this little uh, armature tab at the bottom and then make sure you tick this little uh, only deform bones. <laughs> It'll save you into a much nicer hierarchy. You can look now when you switch back into Unity and re-import this one now you'll see the big difference here. If you remember what it looked like before, and now you can see you've only got a small number of bones instead. And now let's try again. Let's set the root node now, and let's just set it to the rig slash root slash def dash spine bone. And if we press play now, it'll uh, use the root motion that we've created, and it'll automatically have your characters walk forward as uh, intended with the animation that we created. So uh, this is how you enable root motion. And you can also delete these little uh, end bones. You don't really need those as well but everything else is pretty much needed for the deformation, but you can just delete those. Just unpack the prefab completely there if you want to be able to edit those, uh, and then you can create a new prefab if you want. But again, you can just delete those end bones if you don't need them. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight to how to get your Rigify characters from Blender into Unity. And if it did help you out, please consider giving it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And check out my 10 minute yodeling videos. No, don't do that. Every Thursday, I do a little 10 minute Blender modeling video as well. If you haven't seen those, make sure you check my channel history and have a peek at those. Until next time, have a good one. Stay safe. Have fun. Bye for now.